Welcome to today's webinar, Increasing Network Resiliency and Optimizing Uptime with Inline Bypass. Today's event is brought to you by Gigamon and produced in partnership with Actual Tech Media. My name is David Davis, and I'm excited to be your moderator on today's event. Now, before we get started, we have a little bit of housekeeping that we first need to cover. I'm excited to introduce uh, today's presenters. They are Mr. John Lahane, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Gigamon, and Mr. Hader Jarrell, Technical Marketing Engineer at Gigamon. And before I hand it over to uh, John and Hader, I want to first do a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, so just a few things you should know about the event. First off, we want this to be a very educational event. I know a lot of you out there are dealing with network challenges and, and have real problems uh, with performance and capacity and monitoring uh, and you know completing your digital transformation uh, goals and projects. And we wanna help you solve those problems on today's event. So we encourage you to use the questions box there in the GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll be doing a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the event. So I'll be queuing up the best questions for that session. So keep the questions coming in throughout the event, and we'll be answering those uh, after we wrap up. Uh, second, we've got a couple of great handouts I want to call your attention to. They're, they are there in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can download those. Uh, one of them is a brand new uh, document produced by Actual Tech Media, so make sure you check that one out. But uh, there are two excellent documents there, so download those and then view those after the event. And then third, uh, we have a Amazon five or three hundred dollar gift card to announce uh, for one lucky prize winner on today's live event. We'll do that at the very end of today's event. If you're watching this event on demand, I'm sorry the drawing has already occurred. Uh, full prize terms and conditions can be found on our website events.actualtechmedia.com. And then before we kick it off, um, I wanna welcome John and Hader uh, again. Thank you, John and Hader for being here. And I wanna do a little bit of, uh, you know, just level setting here. You know, first off on the event, you're gonna learn about enhancing your infrastructure resiliency and availability. You'll learn how to reduce operating and monitoring costs how to improve efficiencies and cooperation between IT teams. You'll get a step-by-step -step GUI configuration example of the Gigamon tool. So I'm looking forward to that, uh, especially, and the live demonstration of how Gigamon can help enhance day-to-day -day operations of your NetOps teams to remove a single point of network failure. So that's what you'll learn about. Um, but first off, you know, when it comes to digital transformation, I know a lot of companies out there are you know, moving forward with digital transformation initiatives. Uh, I saw one uh, study or, or a survey that said that 85% of CIOs said they have to accomplish their digital transformation uh, projects within the next two years, or they fear that um, they'll lose competitive advantage, you know, in their industry or in their business segment. So, you know, digital transformation is, is real. And so many companies out there uh, whether they call it digital transformation, you know, officially or not, you know, they're doing it in, in one way or another. And it's these types of projects that are going to really impact uh, the customer experience. And, and that's why we're undertaking them, not just to, you know, change our, our monoliths into uh, cloud native apps. Uh, that doesn't help specifically our, our consumers, but to actually uh, transform the consumer experience uh, and really change our companies and make us more competitive. But what does this really mean for IT practitioners out there in the world? Um, I mean, first off, we really have to embrace this digital transformation. Uh, we have to stop focusing on the the kilobytes and, and terabytes and the speeds and feeds and this cloud or that cloud and really embrace digital transformation for our companies by focusing on our applications and the network that delivers those applications uh, and making sure that that network is uh, highly performant, highly resilient, and can really uh, get those applications up and make sure the applications are up uh, all the time. Because honestly, that's the expectation of our customers and our end users out there. But first, we need some sort of visibility. I mean, we need total visibility into all these applications and what's happening really on the network, what's consuming the network, um, what are the critical applications on the network? Because traditional visibility solutions just aren't enough. 
you know, having solutions that give us, you know, after the fact, for example, uh, security and compliance issues, you know, when in many cases it's just too late to do something about it, uh, they just aren't going to uh, meet the needs of the business in the future. Uh, the network needs resiliency, it needs it across the board, and it's only possible, all of these things really are only possible, digital transformation is only possible with a resilient, uh, very secure network where we have this visibility that we need. And so I'm excited to have the folks on from Gigamon, uh, John and Hayter today to talk about the Gigamon uh, visibility solution. Uh, John, I'm gonna hand it over to you now. Great, thanks David. Nice setup, I appreciate it. And of course, uh, thank you all for joining and tuning in this morning, this afternoon. Um, I'm here with Hayter and uh, we're gonna chat about inline bypass and um, we're gonna try some live demos. So uh, fingers crossed it's gonna work. Um, of course, uh, both Hayter and I have been in operations before and one of the states that we we had loved to have been in when we were um, in operations was this nirvana or utopia state where you didn't have to take tools down and the network was always available and highly resilient and hopefully our solutions that we talk about today will help you uh, will put some ideas into your head and um, help you kind of decide whether uh, inline bypass is a great thing for you and, and I think you will. So let me forward the slides along here. So the agenda is uh, chatting about, uh, David touched about uh, digital transformation and how we have to change our infrastructure. So we'll talk about that. Uh, visibility again, and pervasive visibility. Digital transformation is hitting us left, right, and center. We want to be able to see in the cloud. We want to see our microservices across our private network and into our public network. And, um, and Gigamon has a solution for that pervasive visibility. And I'm going to talk about security tools and the way we used to do it and, and, and how we're kind of changing the way um, customers do it and companies do it today. And then we talk about a day in the life of ops teams when you do have inline tools or if you have problems with tools, uh, what exactly happens and what are the things we can do to avoid any disasters. And then we talk about the advantages of our inline bypass solution. And then Hayter will come along and we'll do a, a live demonstration and uh, we'll ask him questions as he's doing that, assuming that it works, Hayter, no pressure. And then the Q&A from, from you on the phone. Um, encourage you to ask any questions you'd like to hear or get answered. So, um, challenges with ad hoc deployments. This, this slide really is um, kind of a modern, and it's a very simplistic view of a modern enterprise network. We have leaf switches, and a pretty modern way of looking at it with leaf and spine. But as you can see, as you kind of add tools to the network and you want to see, um, let's say, all the traffic as it exits the firewall and the ingress to the network, you want the IPS to be able to see it, or you want the ATP, or you want forensics tools. Suddenly the network blows up and you have connections all over the place and it becomes hard to manage. And in fact, it gets very complex. And uh, when we talk about our fabric, we're gonna show you a kind of a methodology to create a, a stack, a tool stack, and still have all of the security and monitoring in place, but yet yeah, have a simple to manage and have a single pane of management as well. So another illustration of a network, let me just go back a little bit, getting busy and out of control. You can see that uh, we have connections throughout the network. But imagine if we introduce a fabric, uh, the Gigamon visibility fabric into the network. Let me build out this slide. And basically, we're going to aggregate all the traffic into the fabric and attach all the security tools and the monitoring tools to this fabric. Now, this gives us a great deal of control and it gives you, uh, as a user, a great deal of control. Now we can have, uh, make use of traffic intelligence and just send traffic that needs to be seen by each tool. For example, um, 
the email inspection security tool does not need to see uh, stream media from Hulu or YouTube or any of that. So we can uh, broker the traffic or um, send the traffic that that uh, particular tool is interested in and really kind of uh, focus the tool on um, traffic that it is interested in. And we'll be talking much more about this as we go through the slides today. So this new model, basically, uh, we have the network, the physical, virtual, and cloud infrastructure that we know and love very well. But now, instead of having tools scattered throughout the network and making it more complex, we're talking about creating a tool stack and giving you the agility to manage and monitor and secure everywhere in your network from one single vantage point. So this is the new model that uh, we're very excited about and lots of our customers are implementing and um, uh, let, me, let me talk about it a little bit more. So what I'm showing here, I thought it would be interesting to see, what, what are you talking about, John? I'm talking about uh, fabrics. Our fabric, um, we call it the HC1, 2, and HC3. And here you have a, um, an illustration. It's not a photograph, actually. I couldn't find a good photograph, but it's a HC2. And um, uh, with this HC2, we can plug in all our security and monitoring tools. We can apply bypass protection to your network up to, uh, in this model, we have four different links that we can protect. So we can protect multiple network links. You take advantage of uh, the traffic intelligence, and that is the, been able to look at all the flows and direct them appropriately to the security tools and the monitoring tools and really um, kind of focusing on what each tool needs to see and do. And then once we have all this traffic in this aggregated or centralized point, we can really take advantage of uh, some of the advanced features that we have on the fabric. Um, they, they include deduplication, decryption, application intelligence, and uh, packet masking and net flow. So packet slicing and like a masking, actually. So, uh, lots of exciting features that you can turn on with the uh, turn on of a license. So, really accessible to you, the end customer. So, let's go back in time a little. And this is a very, very simplistic view of inline security tools. So, in the days of old, not so long ago, really, in the 90s, 2000s, early 2000s, a typical network would have a router, firewall, and then all the tools would be bumping the wire tools and added into the network. And that was great, really, because it was easy to insert the tools, it's just a matter of doing some cabling, and then you had your IPS or your uh, web application firewall plugged into the network. And it was able to discover malware immediately. But the problem was that every tool in this serial connectivity can see all the traffic and irrelevant data is inspected. Back to my example, the email server, our security server, would look at all of the traffic and yet all it needs to see is emails. So, but it would become a bottleneck in the network because the network would have to wait until all of the traffic um, um, traverses this tool and every tool thereafter. So, um, um, let's talk about exactly the problems we're seeing. Our, our operations teams discovered that they were getting. Well, this is a simple way to insert your tools. Um, I'm going to talk about a day in the life of, of the ops teams and, and the discovery of, yes, it's easy, but actually problems do arise. So what happens if I want to operate a tool, or sorry, we operate the network from, let's say, uh, one gig to 10 gig, um, and the security tool doesn't support that 10 gig, well, you have two choices. You either remove the security tool, or you wait until that security tool does support 10 gig before you upgrade the network. Not a nice scenario at all. A hardware or software failure in this, uh, in this example, the CDX and the, uh, the web application firewall, that's gone down, so the entire network has gone down. Um, all the traffic has to go through there. So physically, I could run around and unplug the cables and, and kind of divert all the traffic straight to the ATP. That's a total pain and 
guaranteed to um, cause problems. But the point here is you see if a serial tool goes down or if there's a software failure, the entire network is down as well. What about if I have to upgrade a network uh, tool? Um, then again, I have to, from a security operations perspective, I have to talk to NetOps guys and, and uh, schedule an upgrade or maintenance time. And again, we have to uh, wait until there's a suitable time to upgrade that tool. And again, once we upgrade it, it will be, um, it will bring the entire network down. So normally, um, you guys know better than us, but the maintenance will happen out of hours, at the weekends, and that's the only time you can do software or hardware upgrades. I've lost many evenings and weekends doing that in my previous life. Um, so the other problem is each tool is consuming cycles, inspecting every bit of every bit that comes through on the network. So that causes bottlenecks on the network. The IPS has to look at everything, the WAF looks at everything, and then the uh, the next tool and the next tool looks at everything if they're in line. So uh, definitely bottlenecks on the network. And um, the next point is if we want to add a new tool, a security tool, and it's really urgent to add it, then um, we have to schedule uh, maintenance times again to insert it into the network. And then we have to make sure it's working as a new proof of concept, so long lead times to add new tools. Um, and with the fabric, we're going to show you ways that we can do this in minutes or hours versus weeks or, or months. So um, you're really kind of upgrading your network in many respects. So what exactly are the advantages for the visibility fabric? Again, on the left-hand side, you can see the um, HC2 and all of the tools connected to it, the WAFs, the ATPs, uh, the out-of-band monitoring tools as well. And we see the network has been protected. We've got inline bypass. So it's a single box solution. It's less space. Uh, our competitors have multiple boxes. We just have one box solution. We really focus on that because uh, we think a centralized, elegant solution is far superior. Besides the fact that you're using less space, less power, uh, less AC, and managing overhead. And then once you have all this traffic aggregators and all the links and the tools protected, we can take advantage of uh, deduplication and net flow and all of the other um, advanced features on the HC2 here, or the visibility fabric. So what happens if there's an unhealthy tool on the network? Now we can program it to bypass that tool. So again, no network impact. So if a tool suddenly starts performing badly, we can take it out of, um, it will automatically be taken out of, uh, out of the network and the traffic will continue to flow. So there's no, uh, it's transparent to the end user. If you want to upgrade any of the tools, we can take the tools offline. Again, no, in, no in network impact and security operations personnel has a, a certain amount of operational autonomy. They can decide to upgrade uh, one of the ATPs here without impacting the network at all. And when we're talking, when we're doing the demonstration, Haley will talk to you about a tool group and we could um, upgrade each of these ATP, ATPs in this instance one by one and divert all the traffic to the other three operational tools. So uh, again, no impact on the network, network stays up. And then that's um, really, you know, key when we're talking about availability and performance on the network. I alluded to this earlier with traffic intelligence, but we really are able to steer interesting traffic to the right tool and um, really extend the life of tools. So even though, for example, we're getting 10 gigs of traffic in, maybe only 10% of that is the email traffic. So we're only going to send 10% of that traffic to the email security server. So it doesn't have to worry about having 10 gigs of traffic flooding its interfaces. So uh, we're really extending the life of that tool as well, for, as an example. The other thing, when we talk about uh, refreshing the network from one gig to 10 gig, maybe the tools don't support 10 gig interfaces. Well, on the fabric, we have uh, support from 
copper 10 100 believe it or not there are some tools that still use 10 meg and 100 meg and uh, copper interfaces but we support all of those and they can be switched on to um, the fabric and again even with these mismatched interfaces um, going back to our previous example if the, even if there is 10 gigs of traffic coming into the network maybe this tool only needs to see 100 megs of the traffic and we can control that again we're extending the life of the tool um, and really kind of not losing that security uh, that you know and love so well of that tool another great point is we can rapidly proof of concept new tools so if you have a new exciting security tool that needs to go on the network we can plug it in directly into the tool we can mirror real-time traffic to this um, security, new security tool, and you can really test some proof of concept this tool live with live network traffic and bring this network on, or sorry, this tool onto the network much faster than in the past where you have to go and schedule maintenance times between SecOps and NetOps and do it out of hours. So we're really giving you back all those out of hours times as well. Okay, the final point I want to make here. And I want to tell you that um, um, these tools are very reliable. One uh, customer I went to, the, the HC2 had been up uh, for 10 years consecutive for, for the seven years. But anyway, it had not gone down at all, so very reliable. But in the event of a power failure, we will switch uh, our catastrophic failure. All the traffic will be um, sent through the tool. Our relays will kick in and it won't be any impact on the network again. So the network will continue to run even if we um, lose power to the network. Now that's something you can control. You may, may say, well, if I lose power to our tools here, I don't want traffic on my network because we might be getting malware, but it's a, it's a capability that we offer as well. So these are the great uh, advantages um, that come to mind and um, are primary key reasons for inline bypass, which we're all very excited about. So with that, I'm going to ask David to hand the controls to Hader, and let's do a, a fabric manager kind of live demonstration. Let's have fun with that. And Hader is um, coming down with a cold, so extra, extra pressure on Hader. Sorry if you don't hear me very clearly, that's not the connection, that's my voice. <laughs> I have to. So uh, this is our base where we control everything related to DW, it's called DW FM. So I'll quickly dive into uh, our direct. This is a single view of everything that's. On this here. is basically a single view where you control our, all your uh, Giga One devices, but either it's physical or it's in your virtual or it's in your cloud. Okay. So in this case, inline is physical, so I'll just dive right into it. I mean, since you show a demo based on an HC2, okay. so I have an HC2 that I can show. And this is what an actual chassis looks like. I mean, it's modular, it has different cars, but what you showed is very similar to this one. So for inline bypass, we go into this one, and this is now, previously it used to be called just inline, but now it's called flex inline, and, and, and internally we also sometimes say it's inline 2.0, because it is, it is flexible, that's how we put it. It is very flexible, it is designed to meet the customer specific needs because you can fine tune traffic to very detail that how and where you want to send it, how, want to, how you want to capture the traffic, how you want to send it to your tools, and you can fine tune it very much. And I'll, I'll show you a few of the things that I can. So in this case, let's say I have a few inline network links that I've tabbed. I have a few inline tools added, and uh, I do not have any inline tool groups at the moment, but we can create that real quick, and I have an SSL app. So, uh, I just drag and drop an inline network link. So that creates my inline network link. This is a virtual view of the network. So at the moment you're saying all traffic is going to be allowed through the, the fabric manager. Yes. Without any that is correct. So this link means that it has all the traffic passing through. So this link that whichever link I'm tapping, and it's between your router or switch or firewall or switch. 
And now I just pick a tool and just drop it here. Okay. And as soon as I said, I said deploy. And that's it. That's how simple and fast it is to deploy your inline tools. And yeah, a lot of the traffic is going to go through the inline tool, north and south, so uh, ingress and egress through the tool. That is correct. Now, all the traffic is going through my inline tool. And let's say I want to add another tool, the case, the case that you discussed that, where we need to send some specific traffic, let's say um, VAS traffic, 4443 traffic. So I'll just say, I think it's, there are a lot of options. And so if I just pick port 443, I can put that and I can pick another tool and just drag in that path. Uh, that's and good. So the traffic comes in and anything on port 443 will be directed to that tool to WAF. That is correct. And you can even fine tune it to pick if the traffic needs to be inspected both ways or it just needs to be inspected one way. So in this case, you see as soon as I put it here, it comes down here as well, here as well. Yeah. So, so we can change that to just be inspected one way. Okay. So now we have our, our, our inline tools in place. So uh, let's say I just want to send some decrypted traffic, some, let's say this tool. So I have an SSL app already created. I'll just put it this way. And as soon as I deploy, so this tool will now get all the traffic as uh, decrypted traffic. And so that's, uh, just to let everyone know, so a feature on our uh, the fabric is that we can decrypt and re-encrypt traffic. So that's very useful because a lot of tools, if they do the decryption themselves, um, use a lot of CPU and uh, CPU spikes up. But we're going to take on all of that. And in fact, we can do it once and share it to multiple tools at the same time, right? Yep, and, and I can capture out a bad copy of the traffic at any point. I can either capture it directly from the network, I can capture it coming back from the tool. Uh, it sometimes gets stick and then it can move it. So I gotta put it here, see it comes both ways, and I can just pick a destination port right here. All right, so that could be a Wireshark. Can we it could that? be a Wireshark. It could be your any passive tool that needs to see or inspect traffic passively that you're tapping on your inline network. All right, like a, a send, can, you can send net flow traffic to the same. You can really send net flow traffic, and you can uh, either some traffic analysis tool, and you can also do any type of smart operations that you mentioned, take on dedupes or uh, slice the traffic. All right. So this is how it is, how simple and how fast it is how flexible it is. So you just hit apply, once you do it, and it's going That's it, as soon as you hit deploy, it's good to go. Uh, then I can I can go back, I can see here what it looks like, this is my live traffic now, it's, it's all the traffic is passing, I can probably see through statistics. It does not have any uh, live traffic, but this is the statics that it shows that pass through here. So it's very simple and easy. It is actually designed to, uh, it was designed to uh, meet the needs of NetOps people and SecOps people to keep things simple and easy to manage. Yeah. I like simple, I like easy, thank you. Hey there. Oh, so um, how big a deal if we were to create a security group now? Would that be um, um, challenging your well? Yeah, so watching can as, simple, as simple. So I'll just pick, I'll just delete the whole solution. Okay. Never do it in production though. <laughs> So uh, so I have these two tools. I'll just create a quick tool group. Okay. I did say, yeah. I'll say two group. I pick my inline tools. Let's say first one, second one, and let's say actually all three of them. Yeah. And I can pick the weighting that I want to distribute the traffic on. Let's do it equal. Yeah, you have it equal. It's equal for now. It's created. Now that I see it here, I pick up my in my network, I pick up my tool group. All right. So now, if I want to, you know, when I said I want to upgrade one of them, I have to upgrade all the tools. I can take them out one by one, right? Yes. So if I want to upgrade one of them, I just pick up that tool. I say this one, I'll just put it to 
to bypass or I can just disable it. So even if you don't do this action, so Gigaman has two types of protection for your inline tools. One is physical, where it checks the link of the tool, and as soon as that link is down, it would bypass that tool based on the actions that were selected here. So the default action is bypassed, so it can pick any of these actions. And the second is through sending by sending a hardware packet to the inline tool. So if the tool is able to, sometimes the link comes up, but the tools are not able to process the traffic for let's say 30 seconds or 50 seconds or one minute. So we set a heartbeat packet and we make sure that heartbeat packet is able to pass through your inline tool. And then we consider your tool up. And you can find tune that if my inline tool is able to pass, let's say three heartbeat packets within 30 seconds, then I would consider it's fully functional and then start sending traffic to my inline tool. So these are two different type of health checks that we ensure that your inline tool is fully functional before we send traffic. Yeah, right. yeah, so there's two different types of heartbeats, right? There's the positive and the negative heartbeat. That is correct. It's based on the different type of tools. So sometimes some tools will pass a packet that we send and some time tools will stop the packet that we send. So it's based on that a, a, a positive heartbeat would mean that tools can pass the traffic that we're sending and we consider it up. Mm -hmm. A negative heart would mean that the packet that we're passing, the tool is supposed to drop it. And if we receive it on the other end, that means the tool is doing something wrong. So it's, it's really how you want to fine tune your environment, you want to fine tune your tools, how you want to send the traffic. Yes. Cool. All right. So that is uh, the demonstration. Is there anything else? Uh, I think that's it in the demonstrations. I like it. It's nice and simple and easy. And, um, you know, even I can do it now that I'm in marketing. <laughs> so, David, uh, can you uh, give me back the screen? I've got a couple of slides, everybody, to um, to finish out. Don't worry, it's not it's not 50 slides. It's one or two left to go. All right, back to you, John. Thank you, David. <clears throat> All right, thanks a lot, Hader. That was cool stuff. I love it. Um, so, I just wanted to kind of reiterate the key takeaways. Uh, for inline bypass, and really eliminating single points of failure. That nirvana or utopia that I was talking about, it's it's there. We can do it, um, and we can bypass unhealthy tools as well um, with some clever things that Hayter show, showed you. And we can you know talk more about the positive and the negative heartbeats, but we know when a tool is going to be unhealthy. The second thing is we're maximizing the efficacy of inline threat prevention tools. And really, that means that we're steering traffic that that tool wants to inspect or it's interesting to that tool. We're not sending it kind of information or um, uh, data that it doesn't need to see that's not interesting, basically. Um, we can upgrade inline tools without compromising network availability. Pretty easy to the fabric manager or the FM. We can disable a tool, upgrade it, and then bring it back online, and then disable the next one in the security group. So we can do them one by one, again, all transparent to the network performance and availability. Um, we can dynamically move tools inline. So your, some of your monitoring tools can just be looking at all the traffic and the security tool. And then if we see some malware, it's, we can software switch it straight into the network and, um, and kind of deal with that malware. So it's not on the network live, but it's, we can dynamically push it onto the network very quickly, the uh, software switch. And then that proof of concept of new tools, I love that particularly because you can bring a tool out in minutes or hours versus having to schedule time in the future or um, um, kind of the SecOps guys have to sort of NetOps and maybe DevOps have to be involved and you know none of that needs to happen. We have the tool, we can mirror traffic to the tool, we can test it in, with real live traffic and on satisfaction of all tests, we can dynamically switch it back online. So these are the main takeaways for inline bypass. So I'm going to pause here and I wonder if there's any questions in the chat box. Uh, is that the right terminology, David? I'm sure it's not, but is there, is there any questions? Um, That's right, John. Yeah, so we do have some questions coming in. Um, now is the time to get in your questions. If you're out there watching and maybe you saw something cool in the demo, like I did, 
that you know you want to ask about or get some more clarification on now's the time to do it because we're starting our q a session now so let's see first question that came in they're asking about um how do we know an inline tool is underperforming and what does that mean exactly underperforming Go ahead. yeah so when inline tool is underperforming that would normally mean that inline tool is dropping some packets and and it usually would be very hard to detect but in 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 case of gigamon what we do is uh, like we mentioned we have a heartbeat packet so we define a specific profile based on that inline tool that what is the uh, best parameters that this tool can perform. So let's say if that tool can pass three packets within 10 seconds, I will say the tool is performing 100%. If that tool is not able to pass three packets within 10 seconds, that tool is not performing 100%, and I would like to take that tool out and bring something else in. So we can define that based on the heartbeat profiles that we have, and that would tell if the tool is performing 100%, it's good to go, send all the traffic, or it's not good to go. Will, it, will an alert come on the fabric manager? There... It will show an alert. As soon as there is a change in the state of the inline tool that it is not passing heartbeats anymore, you will get all sorts of alerts. <laughs> Whatever, whatever you define, I mean, it's it's really granular, like you want, what type of alerts you want to get. Got it, got it, okay. And then how does that relate to the, the negative and positive heartbeats? What's the difference between those, and is that related? That is, that is actually related. So different tools uh, treat packets differently. Some tools will pass a packet if they're working fine. Some tools will... Uh, deny a packet or they, they wouldn't pass it if they're working fine. So it really depends on different kind of tools, uh, but the, essentially the base function is the same. So if the packet is passing, that means the tool is performing. And if it's another kind of tool that needs to drop the packet, then we'll say as long as it is dropping those packets, that means it's working fine. And as soon as it passes the packet, that means it's not working fine. So essentially these are the same thing, just the different way based on the different tools. Got it. Okay. And this question uh, brings to mind the d the days when I was doing network analysis. Um, they're asking about you know span ports and our span ports. Why are those just not enough anymore? Is it because of the throughput, the massive amount of throughput, like going through the network that? Yeah. That... But when on a on a switch or um, if you're using span ports and there's so much data coming through, the first um, uh, ports that are inactivated by the switch will be the span port, and then it might capture all of the packets. So it just um, it doesn't become as reliable as a, a pure chat play. Do you want to add yeah, I, I want to add one more thing. So, so we're in an era where we have different kind of devices for different kind of purposes. So switch is designed for switching. Our router is designed for routing. Uh, firewall is designed to prevent threats. So, so there should be a separate kind of device that should be responsible for sending tools to your, sending traffic to your tools. Yeah. And, and that is where Gigamon comes in, that we ensure that your tools receive all traffic. Great point, mm -hmm. great point. So uh, a traditional switch, no matter how powerful it is, it just doesn't have the, the capabilities of what we're talking about here with, with Gigamon. It may kind of, no, it doesn't have exactly the same capabilities, plus you're going to be burning a port every time you span a port. So basically when you span, you're mirroring traffic from elsewhere on the network. Uh, you're mirroring port for port. So every port that you have, you have to span that port. So you have multiple span ports that you burn on your, on your um, switch. So just having a, a, a tap in at the ingress point really avoid that kind of misuse of ports. Got it, okay. And then here's a question that came in from Al. Uh, he's asking, is this an in-house solution, like on-premises, or is this a cloud-based solution? Um, I'll answer first, and I'll pass the hater too. So um, this one uh, that, um, that I'm talking about today mostly was a CPE device. It's the HC1, HC2, HC3. We do have a virtual series 
um, that can work in the cloud as well. Um, and I'll, I'll let Hayter kind of respond to that, but we can have virtual and hardware uh, um, equipment as well. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. So our inline solution is specifically hardware on-prem, and we do have a virtual and cloud solution, but this particular solution that we just talked today, it does require a hardware and it is on premises. Got it, got it, okay. Another question here that came in, they're asking, uh, is there some sort of demo for for a testing or evaluation of, of what you showed us? Uh, would that be to use the virtual option or what do you recommend? So if you, uh, we can uh, set up a demo. Uh, we do have uh, what we call is a cloud environment that's available to public. We can share the details, and where you can actually walk through this the FM uh, the fabric manager that I showed. You can uh, spin up certain uh, few virtual devices and just run through the setup. It, the the only drawback is that that environment won't have any live traffic. It's just to it's just for the look and feel. How does the GUI and the options look, but we can make that available if, if you want to just take a look at the environment. Okay, okay, very nice. Uh, another question. Here. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, there, there will be a link, and I'll add it, I'll add it to the, the slides that we're going to send out, but I don't have it, I don't think, in these slides. So, sorry, guys. Go ahead. That's all right. That's all right. We can provide that. Um, another question here they're asking. Uh, what about upgrading tools? I'm sure, you know, with so many different tools connected uh, to the network for analysis, they're just like software always does. It always needs upgrading. Um, and if that tool is, you know, kind of in line, uh, analyzing or dropping packets, what happens when you do an upgrade like that? Well, um, that's one of the great features. We can either take it out of service entirely, or there may be a similar tool, and we can direct traffic that will go into that tool to other tools. But we can upgrade it and um, uh, you know, change hardware or software and reinsert it onto the network. And you know, it's um, kind of up to the user, the end user, to say, well, I can take this out for 20 minutes and um, not have this security device enabled, or I can have it enabled but um, send the traffic that was going here to similar tools. So we can do this the whole kind of beauty of inline bypass. We can do it without impacting the network. Right? Very nice. Yeah, that is correct. So, so, so it's, there would be no impact on your network if you perform any upgrade on your tools. Like you have the control that how do you want to do it? Like either you want to take out your inline tools uh, without impacting the network, either are it, it's that critical that you do want to bring down your network for during the upgrade. So it's it's really up to you. It, it's that's what we call it flexible. Okay, very nice. I like that. That you. I, I mean, companies need that kind of flexibility. Um, another question here: They're asking, you know, what if um, there's say a power failure or something physically wrong with the Gigamon um, switch there? What happens? Yeah, so, so uh, during the John mentioned that our uh, we do have so Gigamon the device that we show it's modular. So we have different modules. It has copper and fiber mod modules where they have inline protection. So if there is a power outage or the device reboots, the the protection in the ports will keep your network traffic flowing. So it has internal relays that get closed. I mean, it's a very standard feature. This is standard feature where your traffic that is passing through your links will be protected. It will not go down. Very nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, for the person who asked about a, a trial or a demo, I just posted the link to the Gigamon Trials and Demos uh, webpage there in the chat box, if you want to check that out. Uh, another question that came in, um, what about uh, traffic, anal uh, traffic analysis that needs to be done on encrypted traffic? How, how is that done? So um, we can decrypt the traffic and we send it to whichever analytical tool you want uh, to see it. Uh, it can be multiple tools, so it can be just one tool. And then once that analytic analysis happens, 
the traffic comes back to us, we re-encrypt it and we send it on its way. So the tools see whatever traffic they need to see and we do all the hard work or the, the uh, workhorse work of decrypting and re-encrypting the traffic. Very nice, very nice. And uh, let's see, if uh, if you have questions out there, now's the time to get them in. We're starting to run out of time and we've just got a few minutes left here in our Q&A session. Um, another question here, are there different models of the, the Gigamon solution here that you demonstrated? Or, I mean, do you start small and do you upgrade over time as you need more, more tools or, or how does that work? So yes, we have different models. So HC1 is one RU, HC2 is two RU, HC3 is three RU, but these models are modular. So meaning that let's say you go with a two RU model, you just go with one module, but over the time your traffic requirement grows and now you have 40 gig links. So it's just one more module that you need to buy. You just buy a 40 gig module, insert in it, and you are good to go. Your existing links and existing tools are still connected to the same box. So that's the advantage when you have it modular, you can add more modules, you can add more capacity on the go. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah, and then another question here they're asking about, um, I guess they have other sort of analysis tools that consume NetFlow. Uh, does, does Gigamon send NetFlow or how does that work? So um, the fabric will kind of, take the NetFlow information and certain metadata and send it to, I mean, it's not, that's one of the good things actually we do. We look at uh, much more, um, what's the word, high, higher fidelity of the, of the flows and we send that uh, NetFlow data to the various tools. And it's not sample, but it's complete uh, NetFlow data. So, um, and you can really um, add to some of the metadata features as well. It's not just, IP fix, or it's, we even have extra metadata features that we can send to the tools. And again, we control that. And uh, hey, it looks like you want to comment, so I'll, I'll turn it over to him too. No, I just, I just wanted to add with this. Uh, uh, besides NetFlow, like you mentioned, we send a lot of metadata. We can, with, with our recent release, we can send as many as 5,500 metadata items based on different applications for any uh, any analysis tool that consumes NetFlow metadata. Yeah, so we can get very granular. And that's um, what Hader is talking about is application intelligence. So we're, we can get the metadata of every application on the network and kind of get really, again, granular and send. Is it 5,500? 5,500 metadata items are based on different. So you're going to uh, know all, of, all the things you, you, that you didn't want to know. You're going to learn those <laughs> as well. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Um, here's another question, and I'll just kind of summarize it. I mean, basically, it's it, can you can you tell us how does this tool help us to better secure our our data center? Uh, so how so let me let me rephrase that question. So how does it help you get better security? If I understand it correctly. Exactly. Yes. So uh, imagine a scenario where you're, you do not have this solution in place. So I mean, I, my, my, I would ask a simple question. If you have to go to an upgrade and let's say you just have one firewall and that's your production firewall on the front end, how would you go about it? Or if you have any other, other analysis tool that is, that is feeding off live traffic and it, it goes down, how, how would you handle it? So, like I said, the, the primary task the Gigamon has, Gigamon is in this market, and the primary task that we have is to ensure that your security tools get the right traffic to do the right task. So, like like John mentioned, an example where your web application firewall just needs to see the web traffic; it does not need to see other traffic. If it just keeps seeing the web traffic, it will perform at maximum capacity or maximum efficiency. Uh, whereas another scenario, if it's seeing all the traffic, it's, it's performing at lesser capacity. So we ensure that all your security tools uh, perform at their best efficiency by providing them the right traffic or pro providing them, placing them in the right, right, right place. Yeah, just to kind of um, underline the simplicity of it, we take the complexity out of 
having the security tools scattered across your data center, and we have it in one stack. And the other thing is now uh, we're seeing more and more encrypted traffic laterally in the data center. So we can take that encrypted traffic, decrypt it, and send it to the appropriate tool and uh, make sure that we track down malware very quickly. And, and that's really the whole um, kind of what I would talk to customers about is simplicity and having that one security stack and that single pane of management to see all of the traffic in one location and capture I mean, the, this malware that might be moving laterally in your data center. Um, there's so much traffic, we want to make sure you have visibility, pervasive visibility of all traffic in the data center. So that's what we're, that's the value add, that, um, the major value add that we offer. Excellent, I like that. And uh, I guess one more question here before, before we wrap up, and that is, uh, with uh, companies or some companies moving applications, let's say to the public cloud and kind of having some data on premises and some data in or applications in the cloud, uh, can this solution help them to still use the same uh, analysis and security tools on premises by using the virtual taps that run in the cloud? I got it. Um, yeah. So what we can have, we have a, a virtual tap. We can have that in the cloud. And we can backhaul all the traffic to your your premises, and then direct that traffic into the security stack. And it's uh, all of the cloud traffic will go through the same security kind of uh, controls that uh, on-prem traffic has as well. So the short answer is yes. We can virtually bring it all back, and we can make sure all the security tools see all the traffic as well. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think we've answered all the questions that are in the queue. We had some really great questions today. Um, thank you, everyone out there in the audience. And thank you, John and Hader as well. Uh, it's been a great event. Uh, any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, just let me finish on this. I have the wrong slide. I wanted to have a slide with all the links. But it sounds like you put the link in the chat box, which is cool for the demonstrations. But one thing uh, I'd recommend everyone to do is join our community at gigamon.com. Speak to our engineers, put in questions, those weird questions. Our support teams are on there, our engineers are on there, but more importantly, your peers, uh, people that are having the same problems that you are having, they're on there too. So you can exchange ideas and ask questions and get prompt responses. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, so I'm enjoying talking to customers and hearing exactly what customers really feel and see and what problems they have. So uh, it'd be great to have you on there. And both Hader and myself are on there. So uh, look forward to hearing or seeing emails or messages from you. But um, thank you for all the great questions. I need to go and uh, take a, a power nap now after that uh, <laughs> hour. And so, so thank you again. Thank you, Aaron. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, Hader. Uh, thank you, everyone out there in the audience. I just posted the link there to the Gigamon community in the chat box as well, if you want to check that out. Um, also, make sure you download uh, the uh, Actual Tech Media uh, Gigamon inline bypass guide there and uh, the surprising ways that uh, inline bypass helps protect network operations. You can download both of those documents in the Handouts tab of the GoToWebinar control panel. And before we go, I want to announce our Amazon $300 gift card winner. That is Ed Fabian of Missouri. Congratulations to Ed. We'll reach out to you to deliver your gift card. Uh, thank you everyone at Gigamon for supporting today's event. And thank you everyone in the audience for attending. Uh, for more information, of course, visit gigamon.com or join the community, community.gigamon.com. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.